Hello, this is Yogeshwar7000 again and I'm back with another very important and interesting topic and today we'll be talking about the area of profession uh, related to Vedic Astrology and um, the area of profession and career is a very important area of our lives uh, for all of us as um, <clears throat> it goes without saying and uh, you probably would have watched my earlier videos on the area of profession and even other videos by other astrologers on the internet but uh, today we'll be talking about something unique something different uh, in my earlier videos I would have discussed well the best way to find out a profession profession is the 10th house and the Lord of the 10th house where it is placed in the Dasamsa look at the Dasamsa chart which is the D10 chart look at uh, how you interpret the Dasamsa chart look at what Nakshatra the Lord of the 10th house is placed uh, there are other ways given by say Germany as well as to look at the Amatya Karaka uh, where is the Amatya Karaka placed in the birth chart where is the Amatya Karaka <coughs> placed in the Navamcha chart looking at uh, from the point of view Atma Karaka and interpreting it through the Navamcha chart so on and so forth there are different different ways uh, of um, looking at a person's career and profession uh, as given to us by the by the sages but today we'll be talking like I said about a unique way which has been given to us by one of the recent sages as we know that Parashara uh, was the earlier ones uh, a little after sage Brigo who was considered the father of Vedic astrology and then came sage, sage Jaimini and then uh, during the later uh, years came other sages and uh, the sage we'll be talking about today is uh, Mantreshwara and Mantreshwara has uh, mentioned his work in his book uh, Faladipika he was actually um, born in a Brahmin family uh, considered uh, well m many people say that he was specifically from a Nambudari Brahmin that's a class of Brahmins found in South India and um, his work uh, Paladipika is ranked uh, very very important as compared to the other scriptures of the ancient uh, sages uh, like the Germany Sutras and Brihat Parashara Hora Shastra and uh, Brihat Jataka um, so um, we'll be talking about what he has said as to what would be the best profession uh, for a person and uh, he has even mentioned that um, based on the birth chart you can actually figure out that what kind of a profession the person will already be in so it's one way of looking at it is what is the best profession to choose and the other way of looking at it is by looking at a birth chart you can fi figure out uh, which Mantreshwara has mentioned in his work as to what kind of a profession that person is in so we'll be talking about that in uh, today's uh, video and then what you can do is you can you know apply to your case studies your own personal chart your friends chart and for professional astrologers you can look at your clients chart and try to compare it with uh, what the other sages have mentioned um, and uh, how how does it uh, how, how does it compare to the uh, other sages theory on choosing the right profession or finding out what profession a person is already in and also compare it to some of the new age astrologers which you can find on the internet what's the interpretation and how this theory compares so uh, what Mantreshwara has mentioned it I'm not gonna call him sage he was a very learned Brahmin and he appeared around some people say he was around the 12th or the 13th century the exact date is not known so we'll we'll consider him as a Brahmin in from South India who is very well versed in in the area of Vedic astrology uh, so what he has mentioned is that uh, how to find the best profession or how to find what kind of a profession a person is in is look at the 10th house uh, which is the house of profession and look at uh, look at the Lord of the 10th house and then go to the moon lagna meaning which where the moon is placed look at the Lord of the 10th house from the moon then go to the Sun lagna meaning which where the Sun is placed in the Rashi chart 
and look at the Lord of the tenth house from where the Sun is placed out of these three Lords look at which is the strongest one so strong could be now a lot of astrologers make this mistake as to what they consider strong they just look at a chart it's debilitated oh it's weak oh it's weak in degrees it's weak it's young meaning which it's just beginning to start in a rashi uh, it's not strong enough so look at the complete analysis and uh, and and just don't uh, come to a conclusion based on just one factor as to why the planet is weak and why the planet is is, is strong so there are other videos which are available and one of my videos is also available on strength of the planets please refer to that so that's very critical before uh, doing research or before understanding this theory given to us by uh, the brahman the great brahman mantreshwara so uh, once again look at the tenth lord not the so plan is placed on the tenth house but look at the tenth lord from the ascendant then look at the tenth lord not the planets placed from the moon and look at the tenth lord from the sun not the planets placed 10th from Sun so be very clear on that and see which one is the strongest out of these these three and whichever is the strongest planet the Lord whichever Lord from the the Lagna the moon and the Sun is the strongest take that into consideration and go to the Navamsa chart which is a D9 chart and see where that planet is placed in the Navamsha and the Lord of that Navamsha is going to give an indication of what kind of a profession that person is in. So that's one very beautiful theory given uh, to us by the great Brahman Mantreshwara. And like I said, you know, I'm coming it, I'm coming, uh, and I'm I'm explaining this with a little disclaimer that uh, I still have to test various charts on that this theory how it applies and how it works out uh, and you have to just not base it on just one chart or two, two charts so try to do research on this based on several charts maybe 50 to 100 charts and then you can come to a, to a conclusion so um, in case the uh, the Sun uh, I'm sorry in case the Lord of the of uh, the Navamsha where the Lord of the tenth house from which you found from the Rasi chart taking into consideration the strength whichever is the strongest from the Lagna the moon and the Sun so wherever the Lord of that uh, planet of that Navamsha the, wherever the planet is placed in Navamsha look at the Lord of that uh, that house and uh, and in case the Lord of that house is sun meaning which in case the navamsha is leo only then the lord of the house is going to be or the lord of the navamsa is going to be be sun so on that mantreshwar has mentioned that the livelihood or the profession of that person is going to be through fruit bearing trees so there's a distinction between trees we would have uh, read in other ancient classics that they've given classification of between Sun and Saturn Saturn is represented by dry dry uh, and uh, unproductive trees which do not bear any fruits but the fruit bearing trees are represented by Sun so in case the Navamsa where the Lord of the tenth house is placed is Leo and the Lord of that Navamsa obviously is Sun then the source of livelihood or profession is going to be fruit bearing trees secondly through recitation of mantras so he'll be very well versed in not only in the recitation of mantras but he's gonna earn his livelihood through that so probably a Brahmin who does pujas and mantras and rituals that profession is represented by in case the planet which is 10th from the Lagna moon or Sun whichever the strongest is placed in Leo Navamsha because the Lord of the Leo, Leo Navamsha is Sun uh, also by 
he's mentioned and that's kind of uh, very confusing that he could also make his livelihood by speaking lies or fraud and I don't know why because this is what Mantreshwara has mentioned although the Lord is the Sun and Sun is a very sattvic planet that's what he has mentioned through wool another way he could earn his livelihood could be through wool and also working under a king or another person of authority so that is what uh, Mantreshwara has mentioned he also could make his livelihood through medicines so there's a connection of medicines with Sun although I'm not sure of that but that's what Mantreshwara has mentioned another confusing point here is that in case the planet the tenth house Lord from Rashi is placed in the Navamsha of Sun he could make his livelihood by fraud and by speaking lies so that's also confusing because again sun is a sattvic planet but that's what he has mentioned and mantreshwara is considered to be in high esteem considered to be very very learned in the area of vedic astrology um, and also sometimes he's mentioned that he could also make his livelihood through gambling now in case the lord of the 10th house in the rashi chart is placed in the Navamsha of Moon then the source of livelihood is going to be reward through water products and that that's very simple to understand because moon is a uh, representative of what water the tattva or element of moon is water so it could be dealing in water products like pearls corals corals are also found in coral reefs so he could make his livelihood through there agriculture because a lot of water is involved in agriculture cattle breeding again cattle breeding you know breeding of a cow getting milk from it so that's also another way of uh, of making his uh, livelihood and these are all professions related to those days and ages 13th century 12th century today what will you think well uh, the industry of water bottles spring bottles which is huge uh, drinking water uh, that could be associated in case the Lord of the tenth house in the Rashi chart is sitting in the Navansha of Moon and also uh, Mantreshwar has mentioned that uh, pilgrimages to holy places also comes under this professional purview uh, services under a woman so just like in case the Navamsha is of Sun the person could be making his livelihood by working under a, a king here in case the Lord of the tenth house in the Rashi chart is placed in the Navamsha of moon then a person could be serving under a woman that makes a lot of sense that's what Mantreshwara has mentioned in case the Navamsha is Mars meaning which in case the Lord of the Rashi in the tenth or Lord of the Rashi in the tenth house in the Rashi chart is Mars and in case no I'm sorry in uh, the Lord of the tenth house in the Rashi chart is placed in the Navamsha of Mars Mars of course Navamsha means it should be in the D9 chart uh, then the income or the profession is going to be through fighting battles why because Mars is a is a warrior so in case the tenth house lord in the rashi chart is sitting in the navamsha of mars mars and what would be the navamsha of march it could be either in aries or it could either be in scorpio so in case the navamsha is aries or scorpio where the lord of the tenth house from the rashi chart is placed in then he could be a professional warrior fighting battles he could be a cook why mars is, is a cook he could be dealing in lands mars is about lands it could also be gold all the gold's purview does not come under the uh, under the planet mars but mantrashwar has mentioned it causing troubles to others mars people you know it's sometimes believed that they because of their aggressive behavior they can cause big trouble to others they could be dealing in weapons or creating or manufacturing weapons they could be spying so spies 
according to Mantreshwara, comes under the purview of Mars or theft as well. So uh, normally Mars is not considered to be a thief, but here Mantreshwara has mentioned that the source of income or the profession could be the following, either fighting battles or be a cook or dealing in lands, causing troubles to others, making weapons and even spying or even even stealing. So that's uh, that's in case the Nabamsha is of Mars, which is either Aries or Scorpio. In case the Lord of the 10th house is placed in the Navamsa owned by Mercury and the Navamsa owned by Mercury is, as we all know it would be either Gemini or or uh, or Virgo the earning will be through creating po poems so poems are a poet a poet now Mercury is not about poetry generally as per other scriptures but here Mantreshwara has mentioned about poetry a person could make uh, money through composition of poetry study of sacred scriptures or being a writer yes of course mercury is about writing um, or through tricks so in those days and ages and even now you can see sometimes there could be you know people performing tricks on the roadside uh, and probably I'm assuming that in those days and ages it would be more more uh, prevalent so Mantreshwara has mentioned that those are the kind of people where the 10th house Lord is placed in the Navamsha of Mercury which is either Gemini or or Virgo that's the kind of profession they would be in also through the knowledge of astrology so he is associated Mercury with the knowledge of astrology which is true you know people having good uh, Mercury a strong Mercury can uh, be good astrologers as well because Mercury is about uh, sometimes about mathematics along with Ketu of course through the study of Vedas so we know that study of Vedas could be Sun or uh, Jupiter but here Mantreshwara has said yet yeah, people you know with uh, with Mercury uh, or where the tenth house Lord is placed in the Navamsha of Mercury uh, would could be people who would be making their money or would be professional professionals in the area of the Vedas or the study of Vedas recitation of mantras uh, as well just like we saw that uh, in the Navamsha of Sun if the tenth house Lord is placed he could be making money through recitation of mantras um, similar is the case with uh, the Navamsha which is owned by Mercury which could be Gem which is Gemini or uh, Virgo now in case the Navamsha happens to be of Jupiter and uh, what will be the Navamsha's uh, owned by Jupiter would be Sagittarius and Pisces so in case the 10th house Lord in the Rashi chart is sitting in the Navamsha of Sagittarius or Pisces then the source of livelihood or profession or earning is going to be through dependence on Brahmins or some kind of a Brahmin uh, uh, related work a priest related work or through dependence on temples so it could be basically um, priests uh, ashramas religious places even through uh, the patronage of kings you know there's some ashrams which are patronized by kings who keep giving charities and stuff so a person could make his money and a livelihood through that in case his 10th house lord is placed in the navamsha of jupiter study of uh, shastras vedas puranas and practicing religious actions or by association with religious institutions so that's what Mantreshwara has mentioned here and once again do a lot of practice practice on several charts and then you'll come to a conclusion as to this is holding true or not in case the 10th house Lord and once again I'm repeating myself just don't look at the 10th house Lord from the Lagna look at the 10th house Lord from the Lagna from the moon from the Sun in the Rashi chart and try to figure out which one is the strongest and there's a way to figure out how to figure out which is the strongest planet just don't look at the degrees and the debilitation exaltation and come to a conclusion uh, please refer to my uh, other videos or uh, refer to other scriptures and other videos by other astrologers as well as to how to find out which is the stronger planet and then otherwise you could be off and and then in case that planet is placed in the Navamsa of Venus which is either Taurus or Libra and then the earning through be 
either serving under a woman just like moon navamsha just like if it was cancer navamsha as we discussed uh, because venus is also a female planet so the profession or livelihood could be either serving under a woman and uh, could be a queen could be a film actress you know look at the um, the birth charts of who are managers to film stars or film actresses rather women so um, is the 10th house lord of their birth chart sitting in the navamsha of venus check that out through cows so here mantreshwara has given a direct connection of cows with the planet venus of course there's a planet of uh, connection of cows with the planet moon as well as we know but here mantreshwara has very clearly given a connection of cows with venus buffaloes elephants horses so he's given all these planets so in case the 10th house lord is sitting in the navamsha of venus which is either uh, taurus or libra then he could be making his li livelihood through cows buffaloes elephants horses etc or teaching music so another connection of venus's music as we all know there's no there's a consensus on that there's no confusion or or a difference of opinion on this through singing or dancing so look at film stars or actors or singers or dancers through silver now one of the videos which i want to make is again as per what mantreshwar has mentioned he has connection he has made a connection of the the planet venus with the metal silver as opposed to in contradiction to other other uh, astrologers who consider silver as a metal connected with the planet moon so mantreshwara has very clearly mentioned there's a connection of uh, the metal silver with the planet venus sense milk milk again is an area of moon but here mantreshwara has said no in case uh, he's made a connection of venus with uh, with milk curds and yogurts ornaments through silk and expensive dress materials there's a consensus on that there's no confusion so in case the 10th house lord in the rashi chart is placed in the navamsha of venus which is either taurus or libra he could be dealing in all these things and making money out of them singing dancing dealing in these animals like cows buffaloes elephants horses uh, dealing in scents milk curds and yogurts ornaments silks and also being an aid of a lady of high position so that's uh, that's another uh, another thing uh, which uh, we can look into uh, in case the Navansa happens to be of Saturn where the 10th house Lord is placed which is which is either Capricorn or Aquarius then the dealing could be through dealing in roots and fruits and by hard physical labor through servants um, and earnings of men of low morality through uh, carrying loads so there are people in India you know, in a train station you'll you'll see people who carry loads uh, which are called coolies given to them that name was given to them by the British and when they were under the British rule so look at a it'll be interesting to look at a birth chart of a, of a coolie because that's what uh, Mantreshwara says a great Brahmin Mantreshwara says that in case the Lord of the tenth house in the Rashi chart is placed in the Namansha of Saturn which is either Capricorn or Aquarius a person could be making his money through carrying loads as well through hard physical labor look at agricultural labor look at servants birth charts some kind of a profession which involves hard labor which is uh, menial uh, you could say menial but well, nothing is menial actually in today's day and world there is dignity of labor wooden material and also by serving under a butcher so and this is what mantreshwar has mentioned sculptures sculpture making also comes under the purview of uh, of uh, saturn or rather navamsha which is owned by saturn as uh, the great brahman uh, mantreshwara so um, this was a little discussion and also he has mentioned that in case the lord of the navamsha is strong so wherever the 10th house lord is placed in the navamsha is the lord of the navamsha is strong then there will be a uh, gain of wealth without any obstacle or exertion and in case it's weak the earning is going to come in a very very difficult fashion so that is uh, also one of the things you have to keep into mind that um, is the lord of the navancha weak or strong so if it's weak 
he'll be making his livelihood through those areas however it'll be coming with a lot of exertion and a lot of hard work and in case it's strong money will come easy um, in case uh, there is an aspect of another planet uh, on that Navamsha that also take it has to be taken into into consideration and um, and this uh, was a little discussion like I said uh, on what the Brahman the great Brahman and a great scholar of Vedic astrology Mantreshwara who comes from the 13th century is concerned hopefully you enjoyed this video and in the meanwhile I will recommend subscribe to my channel and check out my website there is a link below and I'll see you with an interesting and informative topic very soon goodbye